a great weekend. I hope you did. I don't remember what we did. It was a holiday. Next, next Monday's a holiday. We have Labor Day. And uh, I uh, have got a full pack week of classes for you. I sent the whole thing uh, down. And uh, those of you that don't know who I am, my name is George Geary. And I teach all over the place, right now only in my kitchen. And I should be in the south of France right now for my uh, 32nd year or group in the south of France, but we are here in the States instead and we're going to double up next year, so we'll all be there next year in May. And uh, I do have room for my 2021 group. If you'd like to have some more information, just email me. And uh, I also uh, create a bunch of recipes for different websites. And so today we're going to do some for canola oil that I did. And uh, before we keep going, I better introduce Neil because he does the camera work for us. So there's Neil. Neil, they're opening up stuff. So Neil might get a manicure this week. <laughs> <laughs> so his nails look better. No, they're, Southern California is where we're at. And we've got a lot of things I didn't listen to the governor today. Um, I never listened to, I listen to him, but some other people I don't listen to. And uh, he uh, was saying that we're gonna be opening up a few things slowly. And uh, we've got some places that are open up. You uh, call up ahead and you drive by and pick it up. Well, you might as well do that with Amazon, you know, so pick it up that way, but it's a way to get out. The thrilling is going to the post office to drop stuff off and pick up my mail. So. That in the grocery store quickly in and out of the grocery store. I have a list in every aisle and get in there quick and fast. So today we have Lime Day, I'm calling it. Canola Lime Day. We're doing two products or recipes that I did for canola oil. You can see all the recipes on canolainfo.org and I'll put that in the uh, uh, website. All my recipes are on my website, so go on the blog. The first one is a mojito rum tea cake with glaze. Now, after it comes out of the oven, we'll be getting the glaze onto it. But uh, limes, we're, um, a mojito is a, a, a drink that a lot of uh, bartenders can't stand to make because they have to muddle a bunch of stuff. And it has rum, sugar, lime, and uh, rum, sugar, lime, what else is there in there? Mint, I had to look. So that's what this cake has. So we make the cake in a pound cake. Then when it comes out, we glaze it like we did that lemon cello cake a couple weeks ago. And if you didn't get that recipe or see the show, you can go on YouTube and see those. And then what we do is we take a glaze. And then after the glaze, we put a, um, a nice frosting glaze uh, icing on it. So, and you see the picture, it looks really great. So anyway, let's start. The worst part of this whole recipe is these Stupid little limes are so hard to juice, but uh, you just roll them and the, you, it takes about seven to eight limes t for this recipe. And uh, you've got, uh, in a bowl, we're gonna take our lime, we zest, and you know how to zest by now, but if you don't, you'll see it later on. Granulated sugar and the oil. We're just gonna take those three things and blend those together. And it gets kind of dry looking. Then we're gonna add our eggs one at a time. Now this recipe you can do by hand. You don't have to use a mixer, and which is kind of nice. Sometimes it's nice to, you've got time. A lot of people are making bread right now, and so that takes a lot of energy. And uh, I can't stand people to make bread in a bread machine because I don't even think that people use those anymore, but they don't get the whole feel of the bread. So there's that mixture. Neil, it's not very good to lick because Neil likes to lick some of the, the stuff. Oh, oh, darn it. Yeah, not like, what was last week that we did? Oh, that chocolate cake for uh, our, our neighbor, her birthday. If you didn't see the chocolate cake opened up because I couldn't take a picture of it, they took a picture and I put it on my uh, website and my Facebook so you can see it there. And uh, it looked really good with all the M&Ms coming out of it. So in another bowl, we're gonna take our flour, baking powder, baking soda, 
and some salt. So we'll blend all that in there. And we're just gonna whisk this, or blend it around a little bit. And then uh, we're going to add this to the sugar mixture. Whisk will maybe be difficult to blend it, so I might just use the flat rubber spatula. Just slowly a little bit will work. Then we're gonna put some sour cream in this and the juice. This is a very popular, I've made this a, a lot for uh, some classes and I get the question a lot, where do you get inspiration for these things? Well, I was in London one year and I walked past this bakery that had a lime pound cake and I thought, you know, I think it'd be better if it had some rum in it. And uh, so that's where I came up with the idea and put it all together. And then um, I had uh, Canola ask me to do some stuff and I love making cakes with oil because they stay a lot moister than using butter and they don't have flavor. Oil doesn't have flavor to where you can uh, put the lime in it and you get the flavor. So you can see how thick that is now. Now what we're gonna do is take the lime juice and some sour cream. We're gonna I'll move this off to the side so you can see this. We'll blend this up. Just now you can use yogurt if you don't have any sour cream, some um, vanilla yogurt. Don't use like banana yogurt because then it would be a tropical dessert. And then we will pour this in. You can use the mixer if you want, but I just like to uh, once in a while do everything by hand so you can see it. And then we're going to blend this up. Now, after we blend this up, we're going to add some mint. And I'm going to take mint and make sure I get this all incorporated really nice. Now, first, you're going to think there isn't enough batter, too, because you're going to be used to a large amount of batter. And you can see some of the lime in there. Let's see, there's our batter. Let's see the little green. The little green specks. Uh -huh. Now, got some more mint. Now again, when I use fresh mint or fresh, any of the fresh uh, herbs, you, oh, the aroma, it smells like mojitos. I don't want to use any of the stems, unless you're doing this for someone you don't like and they're gonna get it in their tea and then you'll have a problem. But I've just got a little bit, I'm gonna rinse this off just a little bit. I can feel a little bit of sand. I do have a, a, a mint spinner, but I need this right now, so. And this is gonna get all chopped up. Normally I would uh, chiffonade this if the leaves are larger, which that's like we do the basil, stack them, roll them, slice them. But I don't. That was on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? What was? Chef and I. Oh, yeah. you're right. Yeah. We were watching uh, that show, uh, the, what was it? The Celebrity. Oh, with one and, person uh, in the audience. Yeah, Celebrity version, and we were sitting there, and back when Regis Philbin did the show, when it started, remember that? And everybody watched it because we thought somebody's going to get a million dollars. It's kind of like the $64,000 question back in the day. Everybody thought $64,000. Well, a million is a lot. I wouldn't mind getting it. But the number one category that people do not have a thought, a save a friend or, or something like that is food. It's crazy. There's always a food question. And most people, if you don't cook, you don't know what chef and not is. And, uh, or you don't watch my shows. So uh, chef and not, the way the reason why you do that to basil leaves or large mint leaves you don't want them to brown if they're going to sit like on top of a dish or something like that if you're doing some pasta here it's going inside the dish and i'm using it quickly 
So there we've got our mint and our whole thing. Now our pan has already been uh, sprayed and we'll pour that in. And we will put this in the oven at 350. And who knows how long it takes, I forget. But we will check on it. Whenever I see a recipe that says, let's say 24 to 28 minutes, I will start a few minutes before the first number. So if it says 20 to 25 minutes, I'll go about 18 minutes and then start checking it. And uh, the way you tell, get all of this schmuck. Uh, the way you tell if this is uh, done is a toothpick into the center comes out dry. Now, if it comes out wet and moist, it still needs time. If it comes out with crumb, that's fine for brownies, but not for this. So we're gonna put this in the oven and we're gonna be right back as soon as it's done. Okay, so you learned how to make a mojito pound cake and now we've got a key lime pie. This I did for canola also, but um, it, it, there's so many different kind of key lime pies out there. And if you've ever been to Key West, every other place has key lime pie for sale. We were there for New Year's and uh, it was a wild New Year's, I must say. And uh, it was, uh, if we would have known that might be our last New Year's, I would have been more wild. But uh, it, it is a lot of fun, Key West is. And uh, the I've been there many times on cruise ships. That was the first time I spent uh, a week there. So Key Lime, like I said, every place has Key Lime. It says world famous, our best, or whatever. It all tastes the same after a while. But uh, Key Lime pie is normally made with a graham cracker crust, and I have the recipe here for you with the crust. Our problem was is at the grocery store, you just don't know what you're gonna find, and there wasn't any graham crackers, so, but they had already made crust, so I just bought that. And uh, uh, the lid, turn it upside down, and you can put it on top, and there it becomes your, uh, to take it somewhere. Did you know that, Neil? I did not. Well, it's amazing the things you learn through me, right? It also looks like a spaceship. It's spaceship. <laughs> well, so let's see if I have enough water in here. Let me add a little bit more water. We're get, we need a double boiler. And uh, I talk about double boilers with chocolate all the time, that I do not have one. I have one back there that is just for looks. And I normally do it on um, a bowl like this, mostly so I can see the water rippling too. So here's our ingredients. Is uh, We have egg yolks, we have some canola oil, granulated sugar, and lime juice. And they do sell, key lime juice in a bottle. And uh, a lot of the places in, in uh, Key West sells it too, but I, I go ahead and juice my own limes. Then we have lime zest, heavy cream, and we've got little limes for decorative. Doesn't take that long to do this. There is a version using uh, evaporated milk. It's a little quicker, but it's a lot sweeter. We're gonna take our eggs and our oil and our granulated sugar. And we're gonna put this in here, blend it up. The reason why a double boiler is you don't want those eggs to become scrambled eggs and that's what will happen if you dump it in. Now, tomorrow, Thursday, Wednesday, Wednesday, we have a lemon curd that we're gonna be making almost the same way. And uh, when we make the lemon curd, I'm gonna go into a lot more detail on how to do this. But uh, we'll just do this until it thickens. And then we will wipe the bottom off of the pan. Let me get a spatula. And then what we do is we're going to take and uh, whip the cream while this is cooling. And then we're gonna fold about three fourths of the cream into the hair and put it into our pie crust and let it firm up. And the other fourth of the whipped cream will be on top to decorate. One of these pies serves about eight people. It's very tart. It's not green. If you have anybody buy or give you a key lime pie and it's green, 
you know they put color into it. One of my first bakery jobs I had, we were taught if you have to put color into something, you shouldn't be serving it. Unless it's a, a birthday cake that you're doing like red roses or something. But if it's regular food, you don't add coloring into it. You just add the lemon, the zest, and it's great. But you can't tell if this is lemon curd or lime, really, until you taste it. Did you have any le lime, uh, um, key lime pie? Did we? I, I think so. Yeah, we had it I've one had slice. I've had before. Only one slice, yeah. But they serve it frozen, too, um, because it's so hot there. And uh, they, uh, they really love their key lime pie. So this starts to thicken. You, you'll see it start to thicken. Now, there's also this whole thing of till it coats the back of a metal spoon. And I'm going to get a metal spoon and show you this. If I do this right now, it just coated the back of a metal spoon, didn't it? So it's done. No. You have to, they don't finish the technique. You have to go like this, and if it runs, which it's doing, it's not thick enough. If it doesn't run, then it's ready to go. But after you've made this a couple times, you'll be able to see just by look. It's almost like, remember when we did the uh, custard for the ice cream? Same type of process. Except there, we didn't use a double boiler. We did make sure those egg yolks and all that cream and sugar came to a temperature to thicken. Now, let's just say you make this and you accidentally forget and you don't make it till it thickens all the way. Then what happens is your pie becomes soup. Key lime soup. Now, I try to help you if you have a problem like that. So what would you do is you would take the pie, let's say you're gonna cut a wedge out and it just runs, put it in a parfait glass, add a little bit of ice cream, and just call it um, key lime uh, surprise. I thought you were gonna say put a vodka in it and put it in a glass. Well, you could do that, <laughs> or rum to make it a, a, a mojito-ish uh, dessert. But I always say if it, you didn't burn it, you can fix it some way. And, uh, my favorite problem that I had to fix was I was in Dallas at um, an opening of a Sir La Table store back in the 90s, and I was doing a cheesecake, an apple cheesecake, and they made it ahead. So I walk in, the cheesecake looks great. I uh, am about ready to do my demo, my cheesecake. This is getting close, so I don't wanna stop doing this. The cheesecake is sitting here, and I'm unmolding it. As I unmold it, it runs like all over the place. The gasp of everybody at the class. And I said, don't worry, watch. I took it all, crust and all, scraped it up off the clean table. That's why you always have your area clean in case something like that happens. So I cleaned it all up and uh, put it, uh, had a clean table, put it in a nine by 13 inch pan, baked it until it was completely done, scooped it in par parfait glasses with a scoop of ice cream, and it was called Apple Cheesecake Surprise. Everyone still got the dessert, and it didn't ruin. So as long as you have whipped cream, ice cream, and Kahlua, you can fix any dessert ever in uh, your uh, repertoire if you're making something. Um, over the years, can you think of something that I've really messed up You said something about you were unmolding chocolate balloons and they oh uh, exploded yeah well that yeah well that was at yosemite at chef's on, holidays on the front row of yeah the whole the front people. row got chocolate dripping all over them that wasn't my fault <laughs> yes it was i i grabbed the hot warm chocolate i was making chocolate dishes out of uh using a balloon you dip it in chocolate and uh when i did it I, the first one turned out perfect. I go to make the second one and I accidentally use the wrong chocolate. I used the hot chocolate instead of the cooled down chocolate to where the balloon exploded into the front three rows. Like 45 people had chocolate dripping from them. And it was kind of like animals at a, at a, you know, 
people sitting next to each other were like looking at each other and people were taking their glasses off and looking at them and because chalk was it was like a pollock painting all over and i had this white shirt on that was completely drenched in chocolate and uh nobody forgot me i must say and uh sometimes when you're teaching and talking at the same time you're trying to pay attention to what's going on but you kind of uh mess up i'm going to test this again and uh that's why when I'm at a cooking school and I have somebody help me, I will always tell them, you watch the oven. I cannot be cooking and watching the oven. And you'll notice here when we do a class, we turn the thing off until it's done in the oven. So, see, there goes my whisk. So I'm going to check that. It's almost there, but still the top part is dripping to the center a little bit more. But I can see it's thickening up very nice. And uh, you're getting a facial. <laughs> it is today is a very strange day. The weather is uh, kind of June gloom. June gloom. Mm -hmm. My mom hates it when we call it June gloom. My mom is so sweet. She's watching, I'm sure. But you you ask her how's the weather. She lives by the beach. We're inland by an hour, so I'll say, oh, how's the weather? And she'll, hey, it's beautiful. And you're like. Wow, it's raining here. Well, it's raining here too, but it's beautiful. No matter what the weather is, it's beautiful. And it's just a, a, our, our ongoing joke that uh, she could never be a weather lady at uh, the station because, uh, well, San Diego is always 72 and sunny. And I joke with uh, uh, the weather, Heather down at CBS, she and I normally do our segments together and uh, one day, I went out to lunch with her, and everybody knows her in San Diego, because she's been on camera for years, and uh, we're at lunch, and I walk on the other side of the, we say goodbye, and she goes to the right, and I go to the left, and it's pouring down rain, and I look over at her, and I said, Heather, I thought you said it would be 72 and sunny today, and she's like, damn you, because <laughs> I'm sure. You know, she gets asked at the grocery store, you said it was gonna be sunny and it's not, you know. Uh, all right, so this is nice and thick. So I'm gonna take this off and wipe the bottom down. And you can see it's like pancake batter. And I'm gonna put this in the fridge. And while this is in the fridge, I'm going to make my whipped cream. Oh, I was supposed to put the zest in here. See, this is another thing. You see that I have all the ingredients out, and that's called um, everything in its place, mise en place. And I put it all so I have it out, and I remember everything. I would have forgotten that lemon zest, or lime zest. There it is. So, now, put that there. All right. Now we've got our whipped cream, and I'm using heavy cream, and uh, I've been getting for the past month um, whipping cream and milk in the glass bottle, and uh, this comes from Northern California, but uh, it's farm to you produce that uh, they aren't a sponsor, but uh, I've been using a lot of their produce, and it's really good. I love it. It comes in on, uh, it's not a produce box. A lot of places do produce boxes that you're stuck with whatever they give you. And with me is three days before they're delivering it, they give me a list on what I'm getting. And if I don't want oranges, I have too many left over, I get rid of those and add more apples or whatever. So, and then I can add dairy onto it. But we've got our cream, heavy cream. And I'll do this, no sugar in it. I'm just gonna, uh, because you saw that lime juice and thickening, it's got enough sugar in it. Now if this starts spraying out, you just put towel over it so it doesn't go too far. And sometimes I'll use the big mixer, but I thought I'll just use this one since it's right close by and I'm not in a big hurry. As soon as this whips up, I will add 
three-fourths of this to my lime mixture. Fold it in and then put it into my pie pan with the graham cracker crust. You can freeze this at that point if you want. I will uh, just refrigerate it. And the heavier fat cream, this is probably 36%. Butter's 100, or 99.9. And uh, Neil's looking at this because he loves whipped cream. And uh, last Monday we did the ice cream and the fudge sauce, and then over the weekend, oh, that's what I did. I canned uh, uh, produce. I went over to um, Aldi. We have a new one by us, and uh, they had raspberries for a dollar eight per pack package, and they're Driscoll. And uh, same thing with blackberries. So I got a case of each. I had sugar. So I thought, well, I am going to make preserves. So that's what I did all day Sunday, is I made two dozen jars of preserves. And uh, I had a little bit of raspberry left that was too much for a jar. So we took that and put it on the ice cream sundaes with the hot fudge sauce. Oh, that was good, too. Mm -hmm. No whipped cream, though. I thought about getting the whipped cream out, and I went, eh. All right, you can see it's getting thicker. At this point, if you can see this, when you pull the beaters back, it starts looking like a rudder from a motorboat. That is when you would put the granulated sugar in. I don't use powdered sugar when I make uh, whipped cream or Chantilly cream as the French call it. And the reason for that is because the whipped cream, when you add uh, granulated sugar, I've given it enough time at this point that the beater will hit the granulation and they'll, to an extent, melt. That will be nice and smooth and you will not feel any granulation. If I put powdered sugar in this, Powdered sugar has 10% cornstarch, and if you've ever tasted the cornstarch on your whipped cream, it coats the top of the roof of your mouth, and it doesn't taste very good. So I try to stay away from that. So there's our whipped cream, and we will check the pie, and we'll put this together. We'll be right back. Okay, our mixture for our lemon. Uh, lemon. I'm thinking lemon because it looks lemon looking, but it's key lime filling. It's cooled down. We take about three-fourths of our whipped cream. The other fourth I put into the pastry bag. And the first little bit, you just stir it in. You don't worry about it. And then we will fold the second part in. Just like that. So I get it all over me. And then Clean the edges, and we'll put the rest of it in. Should get all of it. Now this will firm back up a little bit more in the fridge when it sits there. And just to make it a little smoother, I'll use a whisk and clean the edges up. Ah, uh, perfect. Just like that. Here's that pie crust that I worked very hard making. And just like that. Now this, the pie crusts, you can buy them in nine inch or 10 inch. Get the nine because it'll fill up just like that. If you do the 10, It'll look a little sadder, it won't be as thick. And then, as soon as this firms up, we're going to put our whipped cream topping on it. If I do it now, it'll sink to the bottom. So we'll be right back to, as soon as this cools down together. Okay, our mojito cake came out. Now, if you'd like it to be a little thicker, you can use a smaller pan. 
This one is the one and a half pound loaf pan. But I put it on a rack because we're gonna be glazing this. Let me make the glaze first real quick, which it's similar to that limoncello cake. It's got, uh, this doesn't have any butter in the glaze, but it has lime juice and granulated sugar. And we're gonna let that melt down till you don't see any granulation of now, you need to do this when the cake is very warm still. I was able to take it out of the pan. What I do is I wait 10 minutes and then pop them out. So we've got the glaze and then we have rum. Now the rum I'm not gonna put on the fire because I want the rum to have a nice taste to it. Sometimes, depending on your rum, if you heat it up, you'll get an off taste. Same thing with vodkas and stuff. So we're just, to like, I do this with the rubber spatula so I can see on the bottom of the pan if I have any granulation. Nope, it's over. And I'm gonna take this. Now let's say I made this and I accidentally forgot to do it while it was warm, because this is warm. Then I would take a skewer and poke all over the place to get the juice into it. But I don't need to do that right now. So, we're gonna brush this on. Let me get a, a brush and uh, we'll brush this. Now this is where the rum is because we've got uh, lime. We've got, and you can see how it's soaking it in real well. We've got uh, the mint in here and now we have the rum. So that makes our mojito. And then we just let that soak in go around the edges too and then we're going to make our icing powdered sugar a little bit of lime juice and some lime zest now this if i blend this up and it's not runny enough I can take some of this liquid, which I will just add to it. I want it to be runny, but thick still, if that makes sense. If you get too runny, then it just goes all over the place. You want to have some thickness to it. Yeah, this is gonna be good. So here we've got our thick, see, just like that. Now we're gonna put this on and maybe a little runnier and then it will run off the sides. Just a little bit more. So this is one of those things you have to look at to see if you like the um, consistency of it. If you have it too runny, it won't sit on the cake. Just like that, okay, here we go. And if you need to, you add more powdered sugar if you've messed up. You'll see this. Just like that. Wow. Wow. Isn't that beautiful? You too. And we're going to put a little uh, mint. Mint sprigs. We're gonna let this cool completely and then we'll take a slice out of it and show you what it looks like that way. But here's our mojito cake. We'll be right back to finish our pie. Okay, you've got the mojito cake done and now we have our key lime pie to finish out our day. We're gonna just put whipped cream on top. Remember, we kept about a quarter whipped cream. The rest is in here. We're just gonna do a swirl at each spot. You can do 12 pieces, or you can do eight pieces. Depending on if you have some other desserts going on, I would do it to eight and 12. Then we're gonna just take some lime, little pieces, and we've got little pieces of lime, just like that. And I've got to cut some more lime up. Well, let me cut some more lime up and we've got our lime pie. So key lime pie, 
and our mojito cake. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope you have a great week, and we'll see you tomorrow, Tuesday, for Blue Cheese Day. Take care. See you at 6.30.